What if I could show you a way that can make your golf swing more accurate, consistent, and powerful than it's ever been before? One of the biggest issues I see among amateur golfers is their inability to control the arms and the hands throughout the golf swing, leading to swings that are off plane, inconsistent, and deliver significant loss of power. Today I'm gonna to share with you a drill that's so simple you won't believe you haven't tried this before, but once you do, you'll be able to deliver that club on plane every single time, producing straighter, longer shots than you've ever hit before. So last week we talked about the head on the wall drill and how that trains the correct body tilts throughout the golf swing. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'd encourage you to go back and watch it. Today's video is an extension of that drill, how we now train the arms and the hands to move on both sides of the swing to produce something that is as powerful and efficient as possible. Without doubt, the most common issue I see with golfers struggling with controlling their arms in the swing would be some form of lifting the arms in the backswing. And that starts to lead to issues in delivering the club. Steep down swings, over the top moves, out to in, slicing, enormous issues controlling direction, strike, and a massive loss of power. I like to use this exercise and analogy with students to show them how at its core this should be very very simple. If I hold the club out in front of me here, so I've got the golf club head level with my sternum and I'm stood vertical with my spine, if I was to swing around my body in an attempt to hit something that was up here at chest height, I would swing the club head and my hands around me in this horizontal fashion. Okay, I, I think most of you would do that too. That's a very natural and pretty instinctive way to do it. What I don't think you would do, is I don't think you'd start to swing back and then begin to lift your arms up in the air if you were trying to hit something that was out here at chest height. You'd be foolish to start lifting your arms off your body. That would make the contact and the direction of this strike very, very volatile. You'd be struggling to do it. What you would do if you'd swing the club around you in this horizontal fashion back to the target and then you'd swing through in a horizontal fashion as well. What we've got here really is just a golf swing that's lacking the tilts that we talked about last week. So if I keep my arms connected to my body in this sense like I am now and I simply add in my tilts from last week, you can see now that I've got something that resembles a backswing and, and a very good backswing at that. If I was to swing back and for whatever reason lift my arms off my body and then add my tilts, you can see how that would look like a poor golf swing, a delivery that would be extremely difficult with a steep shaft, often leading to bad contact, lots of early extension and, and all sorts of struggles that I'm sure you're familiar with. So keeping your arms down and keeping them attached to your body makes sense when we're swinging in this horizontal fashion. So now we need to train you to be able to do it when you're swinging at the golf ball that's down on the ground. And a super simple way to do that is to grab a couple of tees and place them under your arm. So you're gonna put a little bit of pressure between your upper arm and your torso that would exist in your regular setup. So as you set up to the ball, you'll notice that your upper arm touches your, your torso and that pressure, that little bit of uh, contact that you have between those, those two things should remain. And putting the T's under there, and of course you could use a substitute for a T, but I've got the two T's under my arms. I'm able to keep that connection as I turn back, turn through, and turn into the follow through. I can keep my arms on my body up here in this horizontal fashion. Can I keep my arms on my body as I make a backswing, a downswing, and a follow through with the ball on the ground? The answer is yes, I can. And in doing so, I'm able to trace the correct arc of the swing. The grid that we have on the ground here is some visual guidance for that. We stand to the side of the ball, our hands and clubs should move around us, which we've spoken about in multiple videos. And as I keep the tees under my arms and I keep my arms connected to my body, now I'm able to conform much more accurately to the clean and neutral geometry of the golf swing. That's going to allow me to deliver the club 
on plane more often. That's going to make my swing path and swing direction much straighter. That's going to help me hit the ball straighter. As my club swinging on the correct arc, it's going to make controlling the contact and the low point much, much easier to do. Everything about this screams ticking boxes in terms of more control, more consistency, better accuracy, and more distance. And I can hear the two questions you're screaming at the screen right now. Number one, Rob, does this work with the driver? We'll get into that in just a second. And number two, you're gonna be saying, hang on a minute, there's loads of golfers out there, really good golfers who lift their arms during the swing. And I would agree with you. I'd say that there's a, a number of golfers that do demonstrate some lifting in the backswing where their arms disconnect from their body. But what they all do without fail, if they're any good at this game, is they get their arms back down on their body and they're able to deliver this club on the right plane, on the right arc, back into the ball. And you've got to remember these are some of the best players in the world. They're super talented, they practice a lot, and they've learned to make these movements very consistent in their swing. You have to ask yourself, are you going to be able to swing back, lift your arms, and then reconnect them to their body, to your body, and swing back down to the ball, and get all of that right and time all of that and become proficient, consistent at delivering the club in that fashion? Or is it better for you to keep your arms attached to your body, conform more to the natural, neutral plane of the golf swing, that one where, remember, we're stood up here and then we're tilted to the ground? Is it better for you to keep your arms on your body, pivot, keeping your head on the wall, and deliver the club in that more neutral, repeatable fashion. And I'll let you decide the answer to that because only you can decide what's best for your golf game. So it's time to take the tees and place them under my arm again. Now I've got them attached. I've got this pressure between my arms and my body. I'm gonna answer that question, does it work for the driver? I did just lose the tee on the follow through there, but that was a pretty nice contact. Push draw. It's gone 260 meters, that's 285, 290 yards. I think it's fair to say that you don't need to lift your arms to create power. There's a lot of power stored in the arc of the swing. Swinging on this plane and getting the sweet spot back here behind me, traveling into the ball on the right arc, is the most powerful way that you can deliver the club. So, does it work for the driver? Yes, it really works for all clubs. And again, we're just using that analogy of the club head being out here on this horizontal, keeping the arms on the body, swinging that club head, the arms and the shaft around you on this horizontal plane, and then adding in that tilt. I can do the same on the follow through. If I was level to the ground here and I tilted myself to the ground, you'd start to see how, again, this resembles what we're looking for in the golf swing and I could even come back to impact and tilt my body down towards the ground. Again, you'll start to see how my body positions start to resemble what we'd be looking for in a good golf swing. So combining arms on the body, no lifting, keep the tees under the arms, combining that with the tilting and the head on the wall from last week, you are gonna have the foundation there to build yourself the best possible golf swing that you can. So final piece from me this week, Set up the head on the wall exercise. This is our noodle that we set up last week. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put it down in the description. You can go and watch it, you really should. Tees under the arms, keep those arms connected and then resting your head gently on the wall or on the noodle, making swings. And again, like we did last week, you can start without the ball. You can just make swings where you keep the arms connected, you keep the head on the wall and you demonstrate that ability to make a back swing, make a downswing, hit the ground, and make a follow through where you're conforming to the head on the wall, and now you're keeping your arms connected. We're not lifting off the arc. And once you're feeling confident, you can go ahead and pop the ball in place. This really is about as good an exercise as you can do if you want to improve your golf. Pretty solid contact. Nice little draw. These feels and these exercises are designed to help you train a golf swing that is more consistent. And everybody I meet screams that word at me and says they wanna be a more consistent golfer. If that's what you're looking for, 
Incorporate the head on the wall drill and the, the T's under the arm drill into your practice and I guarantee you'll become a better golfer. So there you have two great drills you can do that are gonna have a direct impact on your golf swing and improving your ball striking. If you didn't see last week's video, that link is gonna be down in the description. And if you enjoyed these two videos, please do leave a comment and think about clicking that like button. If you enjoyed the content, do let me know what you thought of it and hitting that like button really helps to get the video shared to more people. I've shared with you two of my favorite drills over the past two videos, but if you'd like to see a third one, go and check out this video next. This is the secret ball position drill, which no one's telling you about, but if you try it, you'll see an immediate improvement in your ball striking.